What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an awesome new add-on for Blender that helps you automate the creation of crowds in your models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Horde, is an add-on from the guys who are at Light Architect. You might remember a little while ago, I did a video on Spiderfy, which is a tool from Light Architect for automating the Boyd setup system, which I thought was a great tool. Um, this is a system for setting up crowds. And so you can use it to create different kinds of crowds inside of Blender. It's really easy. You just draw a path and then um, it'll set everything up for you. So it also comes with a number of different characters. So right now it includes human professionals, human casual, zombie bear and zombie clothed. So um, they are planning on adding future assets to this add-on as well. Um, but basically you can use this in order to set up what the crowds do inside of Blender. So I will link to this on this page, but let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way that it works. Um, one other thing to note is if you do buy this on the Blender market, all the future updates are going to be free. So when they add additional, uh, when they add additional models and other things like that, you'll be able to get those without any additional costs. But now let's jump over into Blender. And the way that this works is you wanna just install the installer file that it comes with, and it's gonna give you a checkbox for generic horde. And what this is going to do is this is going to um, allow you to pop up this window right here. So make sure this is checked and then tap the N key in order to pop this up. And so on the right hand side of the page, you're gonna have options for the different kinds of models that you have in here. So you've got the zombies, you've got the, uh, humans professional, and then you've got the humans swim. And so we're gonna pick one of these, maybe we pick the humans professional. And so once you pick this, notice how there's an option for three different kinds of models. So you've got options for the crowd, the running, and the walking. Let's go ahead and let's add the walking to this particular scene. So I'm gonna pick the business people walking, and notice that you have an option to simulate these either with geometry nodes or with Boyd's. And so Boyd's is the older system that's built into Blender for um, setting up like uh, the brain system for like bugs and other things like that. In this case, we're gonna start with geometry nodes. So I'm just gonna click on the option for add geometry node system. And then I'm just gonna use the draw path tool and make sure that I've selected surface and I'm going to draw a path in Blender. So in this case, we'll just draw a straight path like this. And so when I do that, what that's going to do is that's gonna add characters in here along with paths. And it's basically adding the characters in here from a collection that it imports. So notice how there's a humans walk collection that I can open up and I can see this right here. It's got the different rigging systems and everything it's using that it's using in order to animate this. All right, and so if you click play, notice how they're gonna walk along this path just like this. Now, what I wanna do though, is I wanna customize this a little bit more. And so I can do that either by jumping over into my modifier properties, because this is set up on geometry nodes, or I can click on this option for sync parameters right here. And so when I do that, what that's gonna allow me to do is that's going to allow me to adjust like the population of people that follow along this path, as well as the speed that they're walking. So you might've noticed that they were walking a little bit fast. I can bring that speed down like this in order to adjust that to be slower. And I can also set the character offset. And so what the offset is going to do is that's going to set how far from the start your characters are when your animation starts. So if I set that offset, notice how those characters are starting a little ways away. If I set the offset to negative like this, they're going to walk for a little while before they actually start moving in my scene, right? Cause I set this to like a negative character offset. So notice how they start walking a little bit later in that animation. So you can also set the spread along the path like this, and you can randomize the paths by using this slider right here. So you can use this in order to add a little bit of randomization to the walking. So if you don't, and I'm going to set this offset back to zero, but if you don't want them to all walk the exact same path, you can use that randomize path function in order to make that change. And so one other cool thing that they've done is they also want to give you the ability to adjust how close and far away um, the paths are by the end of this animation. And you can do that using the little graph right here. So notice how if I take this and I drag this all the way to the bottom, right? So both of these are down here. These paths are going to be exactly the same, right? Everyone is following the exact same path in here. Uh, side note, you can select this, tab into edit mode and actually adjust the curves that are in here. So I could adjust this and then move it around in order to adjust the path that they're going to follow along. But what this tool is going to do is this is going to allow me to set how far and how random these are at the start and the end like this. So notice how if I was to take this way up here and way up here, I'm getting a lot more like randomization 
in here of these paths, right? Like they're not really uniform. These people are all kind of following completely different paths in my animation. Um, so you could also, if you wanted to, have it so that they start close to each other like this, but then you could add by clicking in the middle. Notice how that's gonna add some randomization in the middle right here. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to drive um, the distribution of these paths in here. And you could bring your randomization down a little bit still in order to uh, in order to accentuate that effect. But not only can you use this to do walking people, you can also use it to add running people. So I'm gonna scale this up a little bit, make sure to apply my rotation to my scale. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add, let's go with these zombies clothed. Actually, let's go with the humans swim and we're just gonna do a run animation. So I'm going to add a new geometry node system and I'm going to give this a bigger path. So this is just longer is all that it is. Um, there's nothing else that's really special about it, but I'm going to go ahead and reset this animation and I'm going to sync the parameters in here. So notice how if I click play on this one, this is a running animation and it's obviously way too fast. We're going to bring this down a little bit, but you can see how this is going to animate these people running in here. And one question that I think a lot of people are going to have that I don't really have an answer for is, can you bring in your own characters? And I think the answer is probably yes. So you can see the full geometry node set up in here. So you can see how it's referencing um, those different characters. So you can definitely get in here and see that. I would assume that you can probably just reference a different collection of character instances. That's something I haven't really tried because I don't have those characters just sitting around on my computer. Um, there isn't any instructional material on that yet. So I don't really know the answer to if you can bring in your own custom characters. Um, in addition, if you do jump over into material preview mode, these are all fully textured characters. So they do come with materials included. Um, note that everything does run a little bit slower with those materials turned on. So I tend to keep everything in shaded mode until I need the materials, but these fully animated, uh, uh, so these fully animated models do also include textures as well. All right. And so let's say that we wanted to add a crowd instead. Well, what we can do is we can click into the zombies clothed. The other ones would work too, but we're going to click into the zombies clothed and we're going to select the first one. So these second two are going to be running and walking, but we want to add just a crowd in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a geometry node system along a path like this. And so notice what that's going to do is that's going to add zombies in here. Well, if we click on the sync button right here, we can adjust the number of zombies that are going to show in here, as well as things like the density on the X and the Y like this. Uh, you want to be a little bit careful because that's going to create a ton of instances. But you can use it to generate giant crowds like this one. But if I scroll down and I click the play button, Notice how these characters are going to have this standing animation in here. So you can see how for this giant crowd, and you probably don't want to zoom in too much. This is probably more of a far away tool, but um, you can use this in order to really quickly populate crowds like this one inside of Blender. There's a really good quick start video on Light Architect's YouTube channel right here, as well as a video where they show you how to composite um, video footage with um, the characters that are in here. They actually do a really good job with that kind of uh, tutorial over on their channel. So if you haven't subscribed to their channel, you should go over there and subscribe. They've got some really good stuff on there. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. So far, I'm really impressed with this add-on and how easy it makes the crowd creation process, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below what you think. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.